Hi, welcome back. Um, I hope you have seen the first video in this series that got us to this point. Um, I'm going to continue on from here uh, with detailing, uh, some more ballooning, a different type of ballooning, uh, dimensioning, automatic, bill of materials, automatic, an Excel spreadsheet based on the bill of materials, automatic, and um, and it'll also all the details will be the little dash underneath the balloon. Let me, uh, the little dash underneath the balloon will get updated automatically with the sheet that you can find that particular detail on. And yeah, and before I get started, I notice I missed a detail on my ballooning. I went from I didn't get this bottom rail, so I am going to dimension the or. Uh, leader balloon that with a split leader balloon and that will be balloon number seven and now I have to do a uh, increment on that last balloon so we will increment and we will accept the default increment or the last used increment of one and that bumps it up to eight so, um, so yeah, before I spread this design out, um, I'm going to save it, and I'm going to do something with my datum dimensioning. I'm going to add some uh, intelligence to this, and I start, <clears throat> I know I'm not explaining this well, but I'm going to go to datum. I'm going to hit B for base point. And I'm going to snap to this upper left corner. And what I am going to do, and you will not see anything, but it's it's something I that will come into play. Um, I'm going to hit type A T T for attach, and I'm going to select the plan view. And it did some stuff behind the scenes that you didn't see happening. And uh, yeah, it'll just it'll just pay some. Uh, uh, add to some completeness to the design with little effort uh, later on in the detailing. So now the next thing I'm going to do um, is I'm going to go over to this side menu and I'm going to click next drawing and that will open the next sequence in a design up. Uh, as you can see we're at 1000-1. What it will do is open up 1000-2 if it's already been created. If it hasn't, it will prompt like this for a prototype to use as a prototype. We are going to use this sheet one design as the prototype for two to get all our details out of. So I'll click open and as you can see it's changed over. We now have a new drawing uh, ex right now exactly the same as the dash one drawing but this we're going to use for detailing. And I'm going to uh, delete some stuff I don't need, isolate some layers. Um, I'm going to make a copy of this over to here. Erase, erase, move. And some neat stuff's going to come up uh, pretty quick here, so please, uh, please stay with me on this. Uh, we got our our uh, die yoke. Let's say this is going to be our backup plate, and then we're going to have our rails here. So for the die yoke, we need to transform a lot of things. We need to change things. Um, I am going to go to the transform menu. I'm going to object transform my lamina subliner bushings. I am going to object transform this date and die bushing. I am going to transform the screws to threads, including the, uh, the uh, low head cap screws for the rails. They're all going to transform the threads. I'm going to do a quick isolate layer so I can get rid of Okay, and we basically have our die block ready to datum dimension. Now let's make this, this will be the backup plate. 
So we are going to first, we will transform the fast the 3 8 socket head cap screws to a clearance hole. Uh, the the uh, threads for the low heads will not be in the backup plate, so I'll just erase that. The lamina subliners bushings, well, it takes a 5 8 pin, a 0.625 diameter pin. So I'm going to, that only transforms to that counterboard hole that I showed you on the die yoke. Um, it doesn't transform to multiple things like th fasteners do. Um, but I got, we have, Die Designer has some other stuff to address that. We're going to go to hole types. We're going to go to a drilled hole. I'm going to snap to the center of this lamina bushing and make it a drilled clearance hole. So as you can see, it, it clears the pin when the pin goes through. We're going to erase the bushing. And now I'm going to go to search and replace. So I'm going to take this th three-quarter inch drilled hole and I'm going to replace this bushing and all these instances. And I know I'm going to be doing it over on the die set with the exact same size too. So I'm going to replace those now. I am going to once again isolate these two layers. Delete that. I'm going to transform the dowel holes for the rails into clearance holes in the backup plate. I am going to, for our 125 uh, slug hole, I am going to put a drilled hole, DR, snap to the center, and let's make this, let's make this 187.5 a 316 drilled hole. Erase that. I'm going to go with our pilot holes and do an object transform. It'll transform the pilot hole into a 132nd of an inch over a drilled hole. And I can do that for all of these. Okay, so basically our, our, the plan view of our, our plate has been, been uh, completely transformed and ready for dimensioning. I'm going to do our rails now. I'm going to move this and I'm going to go off point and accept the point 0.5. I am going to transform those low head cap screws to counter bores. I am going to go over to the die set now and I'm going to make some phantom lines for reference. I am going to isolate layers, get rid of the, um, to get rid of these rails. I don't need the low heads. Um, I'm going to object transform the dowels into drilled clearance holes. I am going to transform the 3 8 socket heads to counter bores. And it's prompting me for the counterboard depth of 0.440. I'll accept that. Now, I'm going to do a quick copy of these two clearance holes, one for the pilot, one for the uh, pilot, pierce, pilot pierce. And I'm going to do an object transform. And these drilled holes will default to um, a, 30, uh, a drilled hole, a 30-second over whatever the drilled hole is right now. So I just select it. You see it jumped up in size. You see it jumped up in size. I'll erase, erase. And now I'll go back to that search and replace. So I'll take that, snap to the center of it, and then select all these pilot holes. I am going to transform these um, guide bushing holes. 
Uh, this is kind of neat because it transforms the hole, but also the mounting threads for it too. So as soon as I hit enter, it's going to happen real quick, um, but it's pretty neat. So yeah, I'm going to move this back into, you know what, I'm going to keep this over here for now. Um, do a little bit. Create a quick side view, one inch, one inch. Copy. We'll say the um, backup plate is going to be a half inch. Move it down a little bit. And we're going to start datum dimensioning now. So I'm going to go to dimensions, datum, and if you remember on that first sheet, I attached those reference dimensions. So instead of selecting the upper left-hand corner as the 00, 0 base point, maybe I'd forgotten or maybe it's something internal. I can just hit R for reference, select a line. And now if I hit B for base, you'll see it, it knows where my base automatically was. And I'll accept that. Now I'm going to go down to the auto. So I'll hit A for auto. Follow the prompts, lower left boundary, upper right boundary. And then select objects to dimension. And I'm going to hit return. This is going to happen real, real quick. It's just going to, all the dimensions are going to be on there. And um, yeah. So this is dimensioned. I'll use a linear type dimension to get the height. I can take a grip and stretch this over. And yeah, all the dimensions are on it. We're going to do the same thing for um, the backup plate. And I'm going to use the reference to establish my 0, 0. And I'm going to hit A for auto. Select, select, and yeah, pretty quick. Um, I'm going to add a linear dimension for that. Um, now I want to point something out also. If you look, you'll see that I have uh, three decimal places in the corner. I have a uh, three decimal place dimension through these screw holes, but where there's a dowel hole, a uh, precision bushing hole, you'll see the dimensions are all four place decimals in that, in that regard. So yeah, there is some tolerancing. It is customizable uh, for how you want to tolerance. I'm going to dimension these... Um, you know what, I'm not going to dimension these just for time's sake, uh, the, these rails. Uh, but I am going to dimension this die shoe, DT, and I'll reference it to establish my zero. And I'm going to make the zero with the M command a reference. M. And this is referencing off of the die yoke that I changed over to a um, to a phantom line. So we got our zero. I'm going to add a couple more linear dimensions to tie that zero zero in with a bushing to the corner. Okay, and I can do it the other way too in the X. Okay, I can remove some tolerancing on here. Uh, the linear dimension is a little more um, manual as opposed to the um, the data, but I'll, I'll keep the four place from the edge corner to that, that hole. And instead of datum dimensioning, I am going to use a dimension chart, which is DH. Um, it already knows what the zero, 00 is from what we established with datum, so I'll hit enter. And now just select the objects that I want to, um, 
do the whole the whole chart for. It uh, and I'll pick a point to put the chart. And yet, if you see what happened, it happened real quick. But it it um it labeled all the holes, and then uh, spit out the X Y chart um for all the specific um holes and and such. So so yeah. Um, now I am going to do my hole chart. I got my datum dimensioning, but we don't know what those holes are. So we'll go up back up to dimensioning. And I will go to whole table, HD. And I will hit the select option instead of all. And yeah, it labeled everything. Now it's put it prompting you for a place to put the whole data table. And we'll put it right there. So yeah, our doll pins are that press fit. Uh, you know, our die bushing, our ring fit, lamina bushing. Um, yeah, it's, it's all there. All labeled nicely, neatly. And um, yeah. <clears throat> now to finish this sheet up. Let's go back to our ballooning, and we are going to use a revision text balloon. Uh, before I do that, let me x-reference sheet one in. Okay, detail two, detail three, die yoke backup plate. So, balloons, revision text balloon, two. It's a die yoke. We're going to stay with the A2 and the 58. Uh, 5658 Rockwell C. For the backup plate, we know that's uh, detail three. And click backup plate, and we'll stay with the A2. Now for our rails, we have the top rail is four, the bottom rail is seven. So four, we'll come down to rail. We're going to continue and keep that is A2, same material. Now we'll do the bottom one, which is seven. One required. I'll move it. I will put a leader balloon here, uh, or uh, excuse me, a large detail balloon to signify which one is which. Four, seven, and I'll start the leader command, pop a leader. Okay. Um, our die shoe is detail one. Scroll down to die shoe. And this defaults at A36 hot rolled. We'll leave it, we'll leave it at that. Um, now for the bill of materials portion of it, I have to do something called um, attach detail size to the text balloon, BT. Uh, this is pretty quick, um, and I'll select this balloon, uh, distance 1. I will select this length of 13. I'll select this leg of 13, and let's say, I forgot what it was, but I think it was 2.25 inches thick. Um, if I had a side view, I'd know, but I didn't draw a side view for this die shoe, so I'll hit enter. And if you notice the, the balloon turned blue to let you know that you have attached detail size to it. I'm going to do the same thing for the rails. Snap, snap. one inch, and let's say they're 0.250 thick. I know the bottom one's the same size as the top one, so I'm going to hit the C option to just copy that information over. Let's do it for the die yoke, and I'll, this time I'll select the dimension, so I'll select the 6, the 12, and the 1. Same thing for the backup plate. And yeah, that's done. I'm going to get this X reference detached. 
I am going to create a third sheet for this die shoe. So I'll come over here and click my next drawing. And since there is no dash three, it will prompt me what one to use as a prototype. We'll use this one, this uh, current sheet two. And if you look, it's up to sheet three now. I will erase this. I will move this into this sheet. Save it. And now I'll hit the previous drawing arrow over on the right hand side to go back to sheet two. I'll erase the die set. And now I'll go back to sheet one. Now I'm going to create the bill of materials. It may get in the way of this, so I'm going to move this out of the way. Uh, this is going to happen pretty fast. What's going to happen is it will spit out the bill of materials. It will update if there's a, a detail, not a, uh, not a catalog item like a, a bushing, but something that's actually detailed. It will update this dash with the current with the sheet that you can find that detail on. So I'm going to come over here because it's going to happen real quick and I'm going to type BM for Bill of Materials and hit enter. And yeah, it, uh, it found the four guide bushings, um, the, uh, the A2 rail, the Dayton, Dayton uh, die bushing, catalog numbers, the lamina bushings, four required with catalog numbers for ordering. And as you can see, it also updated. Uh, you can find the uh, die shoe on sheet three, the die yoke and the backup plate sheet two, the rail sheet two. So, so yeah, pretty cool. Um, I am now going to do a fastener list. So all these low heads and the dowel pins and stuff in here, um, we're going to type. Well, let me go up to dimension. <clears throat> Where is it? You know what? I'm just going to type FL for fastener list. And if you look in the lower left-hand corner, it finds all those 3816 socket heads, the dowels, uh, the low head cap screws, along with the quantities. I'm now going to put in a title block, TI, or go up to design aids, title block. Uh, we'll stay with advanced designs, customer, demo one. Um, I, I did start this. If you'll notice, it found three sheets in the design and uh, just a random tool number. So if you watch this, this is going to happen quick. It's going to add a title block and a border. So it added the title block and the border. And uh, I'm going to go to the next sheet. And I'm going to go TI, title, and you can see current sheet now is 2. And I'll go to the die shoe, TI for title, sheet 3 of 3. Now I'm going to do, now I'm back to sheet 1, and I am going to do my Excel spreadsheet. And where do I find that? I just type Excel in normally. Um, so I don't remember where I have it. Export bill of materials, export to a spreadsheet. So Excel is the command. I'll click it and basically you, what you have to have is you have to have Excel loaded on your computer, uh, but it will create an Excel spreadsheet and open that. And um, yeah, here's your bill of materials, detail one through eight, quantities, materials, height, length, width. Um, it gives total weights. Uh, we have a bottom weight. We have a top weight. We shouldn't have a top weight. Um, job number. We have our fastener list over here, and um, and yeah, so so kind of cool, huh? The way this works, and and I know it was pretty simple, but basically it's a complete design for for what it was. So again, uh, 
thank you for watching and um, hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to do a couple more videos on uh, bend development automatically, uh, bend over bend, so you can unbend things sequentially and you can uh, put over bend in them for spring back. Um, I got a number of things I'm going to be doing, so so keep checking back and um, and see what's what's new. Thank you for watching.